welcome to our, uh, our newest CTR update. Uh, this is a good one uh, because, as you may have heard, uh, it's time for us to begin to uh, start to regather uh, as, as, a, as a corporate body for worship, and that's exciting. Um, now, there are uh, going to be some restrictions, and that's about kind of what we're about today. We're going to talk about our, our plan for regathering and uh, this kind of the why and the what of it over the next few minutes. Now, the first thing you need to know is that we are going to be following the mandates of our state government and, uh, and the CDC guidelines, which are basically threefold. Uh, we can have groups of, uh, of 50 people, excuse me, meet indoors in addition to the staff that are there. And we can have groups of 100 people meet outdoors in addition to the staff. Uh, and we must follow uh, physical distancing, and we must have masks. Those are the main guidelines that they've given us, and that our committee has been working with to come up with our regathering plans. Now, first thing I want to say is that our goal in all of this is first and foremost um, to act in a way worthy of the gospel as we go about this. In keeping with this, I want us to consider uh, a few principles. First of all, I want us to think about worship and witness. Uh, I've heard both of these two things kind of pitted against each other on two sides. I've heard people talk about how we need to have a priority on worship and that the government uh, is kind of holding us back from that. We've been commanded by uh, God to gather in worship, and we need to hold that up as first and foremost. And some saying, even if we need to you know, go ahead and disobey the government, that's what we need to get to, because God wants our worship even before our own kind of self-preservation. Sounds good. It makes sense in a way. Then I've heard others take the other side to say, well, no, 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 our witness is, is primary in this. If we are to go ahead and, and gather and, and people were to get sick and that was maybe passed to the community, what a terrible witness that would be. And we need to care for the community. We need to show that loving witness. What I want to say is this is a false dichotomy. Um, our worship and our witness go hand in hand. Um, Jesus says when he's speaking uh, well, to his disciples and to the religious leaders, the Jewish religious leaders, twice, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And both of them are in the context where the religious leaders are putting religious observance, their worship practice, before the care and mercy to the vulnerable. One is with the tax collectors and sinners not caring about them, and two is on, uh, on the Sabbath day when Jesus was healing somebody. And Jesus says, no, no, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I don't want you to put your religious worship practices before the mercy and care of others. They go together. To separate them is actually not to really understand what worship is about. So we need to, as we gather to worship, as we consider gathering, of course we need to consider how we would care for those most vulnerable amongst us. And therefore, it's important that we would pay attention to these guidelines and do our best in the midst of this pandemic, whatever we may think of it, to care for those around us. So worship and the witness and the care of others go together. This is how we need to think in relationship to the, the witness in, in our community. Think long term. Think looking back over time how people will reflect on how we handle this situation and whether it looked like we were putting our preference for uh, a, a corporate gathering worship before our care for our brothers and sisters in the community around us. Worship and witness go together in the Lord. And for those who are sometimes tend to go to the Hebrews passage uh, about not neglecting meeting together and therefore saying we're commanded to worship, we must, you need to understand that that is written into a context of apostasy where people were being lazy about not gathering, being unfaithful to the Lord, and thus he called them out. That would apply real well 
if you're neglecting going to church, maybe you don't go to church all summer or you're skipping every so many Sundays and you're just not going because you don't care, that passage is calling us out on that. It is not speaking into a context where there's a pandemic and we're trying to care for others. So that's a misuse, I would say, of an application of that passage. Um, now our second principle that we want to consider is the unity of the body. We thought about worship and witness, and I want us to consider the unity of the body when we think of this regathering. Ephesians 4, 3 says this. Actually, it's starting in verse 1. It says, Walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. It calls us to be, at, to, to preserve the unity of the body by being patient with each other, being humble in, in our opinions, bearing with one another that we may disagree with, loving one another. That's one of the great principles as we do this. We're not all going to agree about how to do this or what's the best way or how big the threat is or all those kind of things. But if we can love each other and work together, that would be a wonderful thing for us. And again, it would go to, to our, our witness and our worship of the Lord. So those are the principles, the core principles that are behind this. Um, and here's the plan. Well, first of all, we're going to begin on June the 14th. Not this Sunday, but the next Sunday will be our first gathering service, June the 14th, at 9.30 a.m. That's not our regular meeting time. That's our summer meeting time. So we'll be shifting to the summer schedule from now on, from June 14th on. We'll start our regathering and have our services at 9.30 a.m. Now, we're going to have one service in two locations on the campus. What I mean by this is we can have two groups of 50 this way. We can have a group of 50 that meets in our sanctuary where we regularly meet and where I'll be preaching from. And then we're going to have another group of 50 over in our warehouse where it will be live streamed over to the screen there. So that gives us a total of 100 people that can be on campus for a service. And then afterwards, we want to meet out on the lawn for the fellowship time as the group of 100 where we're allowed to meet outdoors in groups of 100 that would be a wonderful time to catch up. I really encourage you uh, to bring some chairs, uh, you know, maybe a, a blanket, sit down, maybe even a picnic, and spend that time fellowshipping. We can appropriately physically you know, distance during that time, but it will be a wonderful time, uh, an extended fellowship time that we'll be able to have. Now, you need to know that we're not going to have any nursery, no Sunday school, no children's church. If you're bringing your kids along, they're going to be sitting with you in the service. And we really don't have any other options. We can't have you saying, oh, my kids will you know, be reading books up in a Sunday school room or just downstairs playing in the kids' zone. We can't do that because we're responsible for sanitizing all these areas. And that would be adding too much work for our custodial team who's making sure that in between all of these things, they're sanitizing appropriately. Two requirements for coming along. First, reservations. Obviously, if we can only have a total of 100 people, there's a lot more people than that that go to our church. So you have to reserve your spot for the Sunday. And we will have a reservation system online on our website uh, by early next week. And there'll be some more details coming about that. But basically, you'll be able to go and reserve your family or yourself um, a spot online. Now, secondly... Masks. So, one requirement, reservations. Second requirement, masks. Now, this is very important. Not only is it something that uh, we've been asked to do by uh, our government, but also we are planning on singing. And singing is a really bad way to spread something like this virus. And so it's important that we wear masks. I ask that you bring your own masks. You know, if somebody forgets, we will have some available, but we really want you to bring your own masks and we'll be wearing those masks um, during the service. I know it's inconvenient, but really we're doing it. Um, and I don't like wearing a mask, but really we're doing it for, um, for others, right? To care for the other person who may be more vulnerable. So please uh, bring a mask. Now, you need to note uh, that you may not have, be able to come along or feel comfortable coming yet. 
Um, and you can, we're still going to be live streaming it to everybody online. So you can still watch the service in real time online on that Sunday from uh, your home. And in fact, I encourage you, if you're, if, there's just, if you're just a couple, maybe you can invite one or two people over to your home, or, or three, I guess, because you can have a total of five, to come and watch it with you and to fellowship uh, uh, together around the service. We also will be recording it, so if you needed to watch it later, you could. Now, we need to understand that these plans, these are our initial plans. They're a first go. Um, they may change because we find that some things aren't working and we need to do it different, and they may change because we get updates from the government and we're able to change things. So we need to be flexible and patient, right, as we, as we do this. It's interesting that the theme verse that we've had from Revelation Right? Revelation 1.9 is about patiently enduring together right, as Christians. And it ends with this phrase, patiently endure on account of the testimony of Jesus Christ. How we are in our patience and our endurance as Christians is a testimony uh, to Christ. So let us live in a manner worthy of the gospel as we come to regather.